The BMT and the IND lines of the New York City transit system were united into a B division back in the 1970s because so many of their lines were by then interconnected. These views go back well before that. We look at the Queensboro Plaza complex as it was in 1948 when the BMT and the IRT each had its own half of the Queensboro Plaza station on both levels. This train has come up out of the 60th Street Tunnel and is stopping at Queensboro Plaza to discharge passengers who will then change to BMT elevated trains across the platform. The BMT subway train, as you see here, then continues down under the IRT lines and onto a tail track next to the flushing line to reverse ends, come back into the lower level of the BMT half of Queensboro Plaza for its trip back to Manhattan. Here we are looking down at Queensboro Plaza and we see a BMT steel subway train having discharged its passengers, leaving the station to go to the tail track to reverse ends. At the upper left is an IRT flushing line train leaving from its half of the station, and at the lower right is a BMT elevated train from Astoria coming into the BMT upper level. This BMT train uh, from the flushing line has come into the lower level of the station where it will receive passengers and reverse ends. Now we're on a BMT elevated train traveling on the Astoria line, which was shared at this time with IRT trains. The platforms would be cut back to allow BMT steel subway trains to serve this line in 1949. Approaching the Astoria terminal with the arch of the New York Connecting Railroad in the background. At one time, both the Astoria line and the Flushing line were served by IRT subway trains, IRT Second Avenue elevated trains, and BMT elevated shuttle trains to and from Queensboro Plaza, where they connected with the steel subway trains. This is a BMT elevated train riding back toward Queensboro Plaza, and we are heading into the upper half of the northern side, that is the BMT side, of the Queensboro Plaza station. There's another train ahead of us in layup, and as seen from an adjacent building, here's a similar BMT elevated train of Q cars doing the same thing. The train is coming from the Astoria line, coming around the curve into the BMT half of the upper level of the station, where it will reverse ends and head back to Astoria. BMT subway trains come in on the track on the opposite side of the platform, discharge passengers, go to the tail track next to the flushing line, and come in on the lower level where they pick up passengers for the return to Manhattan. There again, we're looking down on an elevated BMT train. Having reversed ends at Queensboro Plaza, it's now heading out, and the BMT steel subway train to the left, having discharged its passengers, is heading for the tail track, where it will reverse ends and come back into the lower level of the BMT half of Queensboro Plaza Station. The complex of tracks of the Queensboro Plaza uh, area at its uh, greatest is almost beyond description. This was rationalized in June of 1949 when the BMT half of both levels was abandoned and the BMT trains were routed into the IRT half of the station. At the left, a Flushing Line IRT train, and at the right, a BMT train in layup on the tail track next to the Flushing Line as this train comes around the curve into uh, Rawson Street Station. There's a BMT train of Q cars heading toward Queensboro Plaza. We're riding a BMT Express passing a BMT elevated car local at Bliss Street. And here's a BMT Express heading toward Flushing, passing through Lincoln Avenue Station. Woodside, with the Long Island Railroad down below and the Flushing line up above, and a train of BMT Q cars heading toward Flushing on the upper level. Here, heading toward Queensboro Plaza, are two BMT elevated trains, a local and an express, both comprising Q cars.
there's a freshly painted train of Q cars at Lincoln Avenue heading toward Queensboro Plaza. Now we're on a train of BMT steel subway cars coming up out of the 60th Street Tunnel next to the Queensboro Bridge. These scenes were taken in June of 1949 when the reconstruction work at Queensboro Plaza was underway and single track operation prevailed during the reconstruction. That Manhattan bound train of BMT A and B series cars on the left is heading toward Manhattan from the BMT half of Queensboro Plaza. The train that we're riding is now going to cross over and wrong rail or operate in the normal in the opposite from the normal direction on this track into the Queensboro Plaza station. The train will not then have to go to the tail track next to the flushing line in order to reverse ends. We're approaching the BMT half lower level of the Queensboro Plaza station on the track normally used by Manhattan bound trains. This train will reverse ends and head back to Manhattan. Here's another train of BMT steel 67 foot A and B series cars coming up out of the 60th Street Tunnel on the wrong track and heading into the lower level of Queensboro Plaza on the BMT half. The platform here has already been cut back to allow the steel subway cars to pass. Previously that track was used by the BMT elevated trains of narrower cars. After June 1949, as we see here, the BMT trains used what had been the 2nd Avenue L tracks on the IRT half of both levels. And the, Queen, the uh, BMT half of both levels was abandoned. That train has just left for Astoria. Now we go to another part of the BMT, a Chamber Street station, the big complex of platforms, of exit and entry platforms under the municipal building in Manhattan. This was taken in the 1960s when the BMT A and B series 67 foot cars were still running their last few miles. A quick glimpse of the bridge mosaic on one of the walls of the Chamber Street station on a uh, platform not then in use since the middle platforms were used for both entry and exit. Canal Street, lower level, in the days before the BMT Brighton, Sea Beach, and West End Expresses were rerouted via the uh, uh, Christie Street connection. All of those trains were Broadway Expresses in Manhattan. Broadway Sea Beach, Broadway West End, and Broadway Brighton Beach. Brighton Beach locals usually used the Montague Street Tunnel to get to Brooklyn, as did uh, culver trains coming around the Nassau Street Loop using the Manhattan Bridge for one direction or sometimes both directions. But the, here these trains have come off the north side of the Manhattan Bridge into the lower level of the Canal Street and Broadway BMT station. This one is a Brighton Express. It will make its turn up Broadway and continue either to Times Square or 57th Street. On the Manhattan Bridge now, the north side of the Manhattan Bridge, heading toward Brooklyn, a Manhattan-bound BMT train of the triplex or D-type cars passes on the left. Here we are at Beverly Road on the Brighton Beach Line. In those days, 1950s, 60s, and 70s, the Brighton Beach locals usually comprised trains of BMT a and B series 67 foot cars and the Brighton Expresses usually were of the triplex or D type trains. There's a Brighton local having made its stop at Beverly Road and is heading northward toward Manhattan.
At the time these scenes were taken, the new trains were gradually replacing the old BMT equipment. And here's a train of much newer cars, post-war cars, operating on the Brighton Local, coming into Beverly Road Station. Here's a train of BMT Type D cars, the triplex or three unit trains, built in the 1920s. The heaviest rapid transit cars the BMT ever had. Very durable and normally used on the Brighton Express and the Sea Beach Expresses. This is down at the Brighton Beach Station, which was the terminal for Brighton Beach Express trains. Although Brighton Beach local trains, having made their stop here, continued westward all the way to Stillwell Avenue at Coney Island. That's a Brighton Express just arriving. We'll discharge passengers, and then we'll move out of the station into one of the storage tracks, either for layup or to reverse ends. The elevated structure here is six tracks wide between Brighton Beach and Ocean Parkway, and the middle tracks are used for storage and for reversing trains. This is self-explanatory. The Coney Island Terminal has four platforms with eight tracks and serves all four BMT Southern Division lines, Culver, West End, Sea Beach, and Brighton Beach. That could be either a Sea Beach or a Brighton Beach Express. I'm sorry, that's a Sea Beach Express uh, leaving uh, Coney Island, heading up the Sea Beach line toward Manhattan. West End Expresses and Sea Beach Expresses made all stops on the elevated portion of the line, uh, their lines in Brooklyn, and then operated Expresses on the 4th Avenue subway and the Broadway subway. Culver trains stopped at all stations at all times on the Culver line. Here we have the Sea Beach line, where the trains displayed number four. This was Route 4 on the BMT in the days before lettered uh, destination letters. And we have track work being done on one side of the BMT, so the uh, trains are skipping stations by operating on one of the middle tracks in one direction. This is at 8th Avenue. Fort Hamilton Parkway on the Sea Beach Line with what appears to be one of the summer sunny Sunday specials. A super express train from Manhattan operating via one of the express tracks on the Sea Beach Line to bring passengers quickly to Coney Island. Here we have Staten Island Rapid Transit cars on the BMT. When the Staten Island Rapid Transit abandoned passenger service on the South Beach and the uh, north side lines around 1950 or so, uh, they sold surplus cars to the New York City transit system. Uh, they were repainted maroon with a cream stripe along the window and they were put in service primarily on the Culver line. Here we see them on the Culver shuttle after the Culver line had been truncated and made into a shuttle between Ditmas Avenue and 9th Avenue. Williamsburg Bridge or Washington Plaza in Brooklyn with a BMT train of standard cars coming off the Williamsburg Bridge and approaching Marcy Avenue Station. There's the dome of the Williamsburg Savings Bank in the background. Track work was being done here, and this train is also wrong railing. The newer cars were re replacing the older cars on the uh, Broadway Jamaica line here, but they still bore the old BMT route number, 15. These pro were probably the R16 cars, which replaced many of the uh, older series trains in the 1960s. But many of the older series trains continued to operate, the A and B series 67-foot BMT cars, and would continue to run 
for quite some time to come. This is looking east from Broadway and Myrtle Avenue with a Jamaica bound express heading up the center track toward Eastern Parkway and a Manhattan bound local crossing over the diamonds leading to the connection between the Myrtle Avenue elevated and the Broadway Jamaica line. Three trains at once. We're looking west, we're looking eastward from Myrtle Avenue, the upper level, uh, the Myrtle Avenue elevated level. The train on the right was the older BMT cars, the other two were the R16s. In the 1970s, surplus R1 to 9 series independent subway cars replaced many of the older BMT trains on the Broadway Jamaica line. And here we see trains of R-type cars built in the 1930s uh, operating on the Broadway Jamaica line at Myrtle Avenue. The K and KK trains were a short-lived operation using the Christie Street connection at, at Essex Street in Manhattan and operating via the Broadway Jamaica line and the Canarsie and Fulton Street lines only to the Atlantic Avenue station. At Easton Parkway, we see a short turn train coming from the local track into the middle track, probably a Saturday operation, because in the next scene, we see a train of BMT C-type cars from the Liberty Avenue elevated, the tail end of the Fulton Street L, making its turn around on the Broadway Jamaica line, which they normally did on Saturdays and Sundays only. On weekdays, they made their turnarounds at Rockaway Avenue and Fulton Street, the stub of the Fulton Street L that was left in place after the line from Rockaway Avenue down to downtown Brooklyn was discontinued in 1940. We will see more of those C-type cars, but here we are on a Canarsie-bound train coming up out of the tunnel toward the Broadway Junction Station, which is part of the complex of the Eastern Parkway, Broadway Junction, Atlantic Avenue uh, station area. The Canarsie line was served by trains of both the BMT 67-foot standard cars, the A's and the B's, and by the trains of the MS series cars, which were the multi-section cars. Lightweight equipment built in the 1930s, trains such as you see here, comprising five articulated cars in one train, and two trains together would make a 10-car set. Here's a train of the C-type cars coming from Eastern Parkway up into the Broadway Junction Atlantic Avenue complex, and it will head out to Lefferts Avenue on the Liberty Avenue line, the outer end of what was left of the Fulton Street elevated. This was before the IND subway was extended from Euclid Avenue and Grant Avenue onto the outer end of the Liberty Avenue elevated line. There's an inbound train of C-type cars from the uh, Liberty Avenue remain rem remnant of the Fulton Street L. Here's another one. These cars were rebuilt in the 1920s from open platform cars of various series and uh, aesthetically, visually did not match, although they operated well together. They were built into three car trains uh, comprising motor, trailer, motor, and uh, the trailer cars were from a different series than the motor cars and were somewhat different appearing. Here's a train of C types. Obviously I rush hour train because we have six cars. And it's making the curve uh, from Atlantic Avenue heading over toward the uh, Liberty Avenue elevated line. There's an inbound train of C types from the Liberty Avenue line turning into the Atlantic Avenue station. At Pitkin Avenue, the Liberty Avenue line made an S-curve to get from Fulton Street onto Liberty Avenue. From the Atlantic Avenue uh, station, the line continued out Fulton Street and then swung over to Liberty Avenue at Pitkin Avenue, and that's what this train is doing. Another rush hour train of six cars. in the vicinity of the Pitkin Avenue curve again. Here's a 
He is a train bound for Lefferts. Heading around the curve. And swinging onto the Liberty Avenue section of the elevated line. The Liberty Avenue section and the Fulton Street sections, as well as that section on Pitkin Avenue, were the old style BMT uh, elevated structure, the spidery lattice work type, two tracks as far out as Hudson Street, where the uh, line had been rebuilt in the 1920s to a much sturdier, more uh, heavily constructed three track dual contract. Uh, type uh, elevated line. Once the IND subway was extended out uh, beyond Grant Avenue to Hudson Street uh, and out to Lefferts Avenue and the Rockaways, the uh, inner portion of the Liberty Avenue elevated was uh, torn down. And that, of course, included the part on Pitkin Avenue and Fulton Street. These are views of C type trains on the Liberty Avenue line crossing over the Rockaway line of the Long Island Railroad before that became part of the New York City transit system. As you can see, the connection here between the Liberty Avenue elevated line and the Rockaway line is not yet in place. Back at Atlantic Avenue, here's a Canarsie bound train of MS series cars. The five section articulated lightweights built in the 1930s. This one is heading into Atlantic Avenue from the Canarsie line and will then dive into the tunnel for its trip back to Manhattan, as this train is doing. It's leaving Broadway Junction and heading downgrade into the tunnel on the 14th Street Canarsie line. That was Route 16 back in the days when BMT trains displayed route numbers instead of letters. Here's an inbound train uh, of BMT steel 67-foot cars, the A and B series, inbound from Jamaica. Here's a similar train on the Canarsie line, an inbound Canarsie train at Livonia Avenue. It has come from Canarsie up onto the elevated structure and is heading toward Atlantic Avenue. This is in the 1970s when headlights had already been added under the end sills of the old-style cars. The crossing at East 105th Street on the Canarsie line was down at ground level because this station on the Canarsie terminal had never been raised onto an elevated structure. There's a train of MS cars uh, heading over East 105th Street with the crossing gates in place. This was the last public grade crossing of a road anywhere on the New York City transit system. This particular view was taken of a train in normal service, although there was a fan trip being operated on another train at the time. There's a train of typical BMT standard cars crossing East 105th Street at grade. The grade crossing has long since been eliminated, of course, with a new station uh, being built at East 105th Street. Two trains of BMT standard series cars pass just north of East 105th Street and the train going around the curve there will so soon head up the ramp onto the uh, elevated line to Atlantic Avenue. Here we're looking out the front of a train coming from Canarsie, passing through East 105th Street and the grade crossing, and heading up onto the elevated portion of the line heading toward Atlantic Avenue. Now we're back on the Broadway Jamaica line in Brooklyn, in the 1970s, when uh, K trains were running and the uh, equipment had been mostly replaced, the old BMT equipment had mostly been replaced by the INDR 1 to 9 series cars. There's an outbound Jamaica bound express, a J train, of R1 to 9 series cars, and there's a K train heading for Atlantic Avenue. The letters had replaced route numbers by this time. There's Myrtle Avenue in the background there with the Myrtle Avenue elevated overhead and a Manhattan-bound train of cars, of the uh, independent subway cars, which had replaced the BMT standard 67-foot cars on this run.
A K train was a train from Atlantic Avenue via the Broadway elevated line and Williamsburg Bridge into Manhattan via the Christie Street subway. The J train was the train from Jamaica and the M train was the subway train operating from the Myrtle Avenue elevated via the connection at Myrtle Avenue and Broadway. This is at Eastern Parkway with a Jamaica bound J train of INDR 1 to 9 series cars. There's number 1575, the R9 with the R10 body. That was the prototype for the R10 series cars uh, built in the 1940s on a chassis of uh, an R9 and therefore mechanically still an R9 so that it would operate in multiple unit only with trains of R1 to 9s. And it was occasionally spotted so operating uh, with the R1 to 9 series cars. A trip around D.O. Yard, or East New York Yard, just beyond Eastern Parkway Station, shows a variety of equipment still in service here in the early 1970s. Trains of R16s and BMT standards and various types of work equipment, including some old Q cars converted to work operation. Another view of D.O. Yard from the opposite end, looking toward the Broadway Junction Station on the Canarsie Line. Still trains of BMT standards in storage here. Anything that would run was used during rush hours in those days, but the off-hour service was primarily of the IND series cars, which replaced the older equipment and which supplemented the service given by the R-16s. In the late 1970s, some of the R-9 series cars got the silver and blue paint scheme, which was then being applied to newer equipment as well. They looked very good, but the graffiti cancer by that time had spread to the New York City subway system, and the cars became shabbier and shabbier as the vandals attacked them with the spray cans. This is what you see here. Not necessarily a pretty sight, but this is historically accurate. This is what was running at the time. We take a ride now out toward Jamaica on the Broadway Jamaica line. We leave Eastern Parkway, round the curve at Alabama Avenue, and head up through the oldest part of the Fulton uh, elevated line, uh, the, uh, the section uh, uh, between uh, Alabama Avenue and Crescent Street, with stations such as Van Sicklin Avenue and Cleveland Street. Here's the curve at Crescent Street, where the trains originally went around the curve and ended up at Cypress Hills, but the Cypress Hills station was demolished after the line was extended around the corner onto Jamaica Avenue and all the way out to Jamaica. This train is making that curve from Crescent Street onto Jamaica Avenue and so is this train but this time seen from the uh, from Jamaica Avenue itself more and more trains of R1 to 9 cars replaced the BMT 67 foot cars in this service although the BMT cars would occasionally be seen as needed this is looking eastward on Jamaica Avenue now, the train having made the curve at Crescent Street. And this train is coming from Jamaica Avenue, turning into Crescent Street and heading over to, heading over to uh, uh, Crescent Street Station and the Fulton Street uh, section of the uh, Broadway Jamaica Elevated Line. A similar view of a train of R1 to 9s coming around the curve at Cypress Hills. A train of R16s this time heading inbound as we head outbound on Jamaica Avenue.
going toward Jamaica itself. The outer portion of this line would be torn down once the line was rerouted into the Archer Avenue subway, but that would not come for some time yet. We just crossed over the Long Island Railroad's old Montauk Division at Richmond Division at Richmond Hill. And we're heading outward. Here we are crossing over the Long Island Railroad's main line at Westbridge, which had been a Long Island Railroad station up until around 1940. And eventually we wind up in the Jamaica area. Passing through such stations, it's Queens Boulevard, Sutphin Boulevard, 160th Street, and there's the 168th Street terminal itself with the tower on the far right controlling the crossovers leading to and from the station tracks. This is from one, uh, this is from the uh, 160th Street station of uh, trains uh, crossing over onto the outside track to get to the Jamaica terminal. A train of BMT standards passing through Sutphin Boulevard. Queens Boulevard station became the end of the line for a while when the outer portion of the line to Jamaica was demolished. And here's a train of R1 to 9s heading through Queens Boulevard Station. Back at Broadway Junction, the multi-section cars and standard cars had been replaced by more surplus IND pre-war equipment, the R1 to 9s, in the 1970s. And we see them operating here on the 14th Street Canarsie line heading from Broadway Junction to Atlantic Avenue. The graffiti that we see on these cars was pretty universal by this time. The Transit Authority did what it could to clean it off and discourage the vandalism. Eventually they adopted some new form of paint which was resistant to graffiti and which, uh, on which the graffiti that was applied would wash off going through the car washers which treated the cars with some sort of chemical wash to get the uh, uh, graffiti off. But for a while there, the graffiti was pretty universal on all equipment. A train of R1 to 9s heading toward Jamaica, rounding the curve at Alabama Avenue. A Canarsie train of R1 to 9 cars heading inbound from Atlantic Avenue toward Broadway Junction. By this time, the outer portion of the Liberty uh, Avenue line was the only part in use, the inner portion having been discontinued already, so we don't see trains of C-types here anymore. The Canarsie line became the LL train, later just the L, the letter denoting the uh, Canarsie line which replaced the number 16 for uh, Canarsie Line trains. There's a K train having come from the Broadway Jamaica Line and has turned into the uh, Canarsie Line and will terminate at Atlantic Avenue. An inbound, Manhattan-bound Canarsie train coming from Atlantic Avenue into Broadway Junction. Back at Livonia Avenue, here's a Canarsie train 
coming from Canarsie heading toward the 14th Street line in Manhattan, passing underneath the IRT New Lots line at Livonia Avenue Station. We go farther out on the Canarsie line and we see the concrete retaining walls of the ramp leading down from the Canarsie line elevated structure down to ground level where the East 105th Street and Rockaway Parkway stations are still located. That's a Manhattan bound Canarsie line train heading up the ramp onto the elevated structure to Livonia Avenue and Sutter Avenue stations and then to Atlantic Avenue Broadway Junction and into the tunnel leading to Manhattan. Here's an outbound Canarsie train of R1 to 9 cars heading down the ramp and around the curve toward the East 105th Street station. At the rebuilt Canarsie Terminal, we have a train arriving, a view of some of the trains laid up in the rebuilt yard at Canarsie. And another train, an L train, arriving at the Canarsie Terminal, Rockaway Parkway. We look at another part of the BMT line. Here's a view of 36th Street Yard with some rebuilt Q cars in work train service and a whole batch of elevated cars back in the 1940s. This is just a flashback to that area because we're going to take a good look at the Culver Shuttle here. Ninth Avenue Station had two levels and still has. The upper level for West End trains, the lower level for Culver trains. Culver trains no longer operated to Manhattan after they were uh, truncated at Ditmas Avenue on the Culver Line, with the Culver Line being connected to the independent subway at Church Avenue. The Culver Line between Ditmas Avenue and 9th Avenue simply became a shuttle, a single track shuttle, between the lower level of 9th Avenue and the stations at 13th Avenue, Fort Hamilton Parkway, and uh, Ditmas Avenue. Only the middle track was used for the shuttle service on the lower level of 9th Avenue Station so that passengers from West End trains in both directions on the upper level could walk downstairs to take a Culver shuttle. Doors would open on both sides of the train there in the middle track since there was a platform on each side. In the earlier years of the Culver Shuttle, the Staten Island cars or the BMT standards would uh, comprise a three-car train. These were later replaced by uh, post-war equipment ordered by the New York City Transit System, either R16s or similar cars of later vintage. And here we are at uh, Ditmas Avenue. You can see the Culver line on the right extending into the independent subway and the additional track and track structure which was built onto the outside of the southbound platform at Ditmas Avenue to provide a uh, shuttle uh, track for the Culver Shuttle. We're riding a Culver Shuttle train leaving Ditmas Avenue and heading up toward the uh, 13th Avenue and Fort Hamilton Parkway stations. You can see that this line had been single tracked by then and the platforms on the opposite side were already abandoned. Just beyond the Fort Hamilton Parkway station, the Culver Line made a sharp S-turn and descended a ramp down to ground level, skirted the edge of the 36th Street Yard, as you see here, 
and duck down into the tunnel leading to the lower level of the 9th Avenue station. This is seen from the yard at a Culver shuttle train heading downgrade into the tunnel under the West End line and into the lower level of 9th Avenue station. Now we ride the Culver Shuttle back toward Ditmas Avenue, coming up out of the tunnel under 9th Avenue Station, skirting the edge of 36th Street Yard, heading up the uh, earthen embankment on the ramp leading up into the Fort Hamilton Parkway Station. Notice that the tracks and ties had already been removed from the structure on the other two uh, trackways, leaving only this single track for the shuttle. Approaching 13th Avenue Station. And now heading slightly downgrade toward Ditmas Avenue with the junction with the uh, connection of the Culver line into the IND subway at uh, Beyond Church Avenue. We come around on the structure that was built on the outside of the 13th Avenue, uh, uh, the uh, outside of the Ditmas Avenue station southbound platform to provide a track for the shuttle train. That track was not there before the connection was made to the independent subway. The station simply had a wall on its outer side, just as the northbound platform still has. This is looking from 13th Avenue Station toward Ditmas Avenue, with two trains passing on the Culver Line heading to and from the independent subway at Church Avenue, and a Culver shuttle train heading up toward us on the Culver Line a four-car train this time. From Fort Hamilton Parkway, the abandoned platform, uh, we see a Culver shuttle train coming up grade from the 9th Avenue station and into the Fort Hamilton Parkway station. Having made its station stop, it departs for 13th Avenue. And there's a train coming back from 13th Avenue toward Fort Hamilton Parkway. Now the train leaves Fort Hamilton Parkway and heads downgrade into 9th Avenue. Down at the other end of the Culver Line, this is West 8th Street at Coney Island, looking down from the upper level toward the lower level where Culver uh, trains to and from the independent subway are operating, some with the newer cars and some with post-war R1-9 to nine series cars. We have a look at the Franklin Avenue shuttle now from Prospect Park up to uh, Franklin Avenue and Fulton Street. This was the last place where the R11 cars were operated, and rarely in solid trains. Usually a rebuilt R11 uh, would be on one end or the other of a train of one of the more common series of post-war cars. The R11s were the million-dollar train of 1949, the 8000 series, uh, 10 cars, and there's one of them now with the portholes in the doors as we move up the Franklin shuttle from the Botanic Garden Station uh, to Dean Street and then to Franklin Avenue itself.
Only one track was in use at the Franklin Avenue terminal. The other trackway having been boarded over to make a wider platform. There was a free transfer here to the Fulton Street elevated until 1940, and a free paper transfer was given uh, from the Franklin Avenue shuttle trains to the IND subway down below street level. There's a train with an R11 on the north end heading out of Franklin Avenue and coming down into Dean Street Station, again with an R11 on the north end. There's the train at Park Place heading back down toward Prospect Park. Some pre-war views of the IND subway when it was still new in the 1930s leads us now to the 8th Avenue independent subway system, which by the 1970s had been pretty well connected into the BMT lines to form 1B division of the New York City transit system, the IRT lines comprising the A division. Smith and 9th Street stations was a popular spot for rail fans to take movies and pictures since it was one of the few spots other than yards where the IND trains came out into the open. This is a view taken about 1940 at Smith and 9th Street of an E train coming up through and then in the 1950s one winter day we have D and F trains operating on the uh, IND line coming through Smith and Knight Streets. This is near the Red Hook section of Brooklyn. That train of pre-war R1 to 9 series cars will make its next stop at 4th Avenue and then plunge into the tunnel down to Church Avenue, either to terminate there or to continue onto the Culver line, as we saw in some previous views. That's a Manhattan-bound train of all one to nine cars leaving Smith and Knight Street, heading toward Carroll Street Station, then Bergen Street, and then into the various stations in downtown Brooklyn. This train has just left Carroll Street Station and is coming up around the curve into Smith Knight Street Station, which is situated right over the Gowanus Canal and which was built very high here to permit ship clearances in the canal itself. The ground was found too soft under the canal to build a tunnel so that the trains were built onto a high elevated structure over the Gowanus Canal area. These are views of Concourse Yard up in the Bronx. The main yard for trains serving the uh, Concourse subway, the D and CC lines. In the 1970s, trains of R1 to 9s were in service, trains of R10s were in service on the Concourse subway, and trains of post-war cars were in service as well. The R10s, of course, were post-war cars too, being built in 1947, but the post-war cars I referred to then were the uh, 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 later series of cars with arch roofs. Looking south at Concourse Yard from the IRT Bedford Park Boulevard station, various views of trains moving in and out of the layup tracks, the wash tracks, the barn tracks, and so forth. IRT trains will also be seen here in Concourse Yard because the ramp uh, connecting the Jerome Avenue line to the Concourse Yard had already been built by this time. And this was one way to transfer IRT cars to the IND for service either at 207th Street or at Coney Island. There's a train of IRT cars moving in Concourse Yard now. We have a train of R10s coming out of the layup track and heading toward the tunnel into the Concourse subway near Bedford Park Boulevard station.
The graffiti vandals have done their job on that one all right, and on quite a few of the other ones as well. The stainless steel sided cars seem to be more resistant to that sort of vandalism. Concourse Yard had a car washer installed and the chemicals were used to get the graffiti off, but they did a job on the paint too, as you could see from that car that just passed in front of you. Sometimes the cure was as bad as the disease. The same chemicals that would take the graffiti off would also take some of the paint of the car off, leaving it looking very shabby. But the Transit Authority was determined to combat the graffiti cancer and uh, did so more effectively in later years when they uh, were able to obtain a graffiti-resistant paint. Here's a nice clean R10 in the blue and silver paint. And in the background, some work equipment, as well as more R10s and post-war cars. Back at Smith 9th Street Station in Brooklyn, when some of the R1 to 9s were running out their last miles. There was a time in the 1970s when rush hour F trains operated both as locals and as expresses in Brooklyn. Some of them made all stops on the local track, others were switched to the express track going through Bergen Street and Carroll Street and operated via the express track through Smith 9th and 4th Avenue stations on their way down to the Culver Line. In general, the trains of the older pre-war cars were the ones that made the local stops and the F trains of the newer cars made the express stops operating on the express track. That didn't last very long. Eventually, all of the F trains were made into locals in Brooklyn. This is back at 13th, at, uh, not 13th, at uh, Ditmas Avenue Station with an F train from the Culver Line heading down into the tunnel uh, into the uh, uh, IND subway. Out at Rockaway Junction, the rebuilt portion of the Liberty Avenue line where uh, the uh, connection to the former Long Island Railroad's Rockaway line had been built in the 1950s, allowing A trains from the Fulton Street subway to operate via the Liberty Avenue line and the connection to the Long Island Railroad and out via the former Long Island Railroad right-of-way to the Rockaway Peninsula. That R R10 train is heading toward Rockaway and is disappearing around the curve into the Rockaway line, the former Long Island Railroad line. Much of the old Long Island Railways, Long Island Railroad's Jamaica Bay trestle had burned and uh, the uh, New York City transit system had to spend a great deal of money dredging up sand to make an embankment of it leading out uh, to Rockaway. New dr drawbridges and mechanisms were also put in place and we have IND subway trains now da operating down through uh, across Jamaica Bay and onto the elevated former Long Island Railroad right-of-way on the Rockaway Peninsula leading to both Far Rockaway and to Rockaway Park. That steel reinforced concrete elevated structure was built uh, in the late 1930s and early 40s to raise Long Island Railroad trains above street level so as to eliminate the grade crossings at almost all of the cross streets on the Rockaway Peninsula. Even after the Long Island Railroad's Jamaica Bay trestle burned in the early 1950s, some Long Island Railroad trains continued to serve the Rockaway Peninsula the long way around via Far Rockaway on the Far Rockaway Division. Eventually, the Long Island Railroad service was cut back to Ozone Park on the Jamaica Bay line and then was eliminated altogether. In the meantime, the connection was built to the IND subway and now we see uh, A trains and uh, trains of other uh, cars from the Fulton Street subway heading out to the Rockaway line.
an E-train, apparently at Broad Channel Station. And now at Aqueduct, now at Aqueduct Station. which serves the area as well as the racetrack. The inbound platform there was lengthened to serve the racetrack and racetrack special trains were operated in both directions from that one platform by crossing over the uh, other tracks. In the 1980s, some graffiti resistant paint was discovered uh, in red, in bright white, and in dark green. And at least one train of IND R10 series cars was painted dark green and was kept graffiti free and was operated on the A line from 207th Street out to Rockaway. As you can see from that uh, graffiti ridden train of R10s, the dark green paint job was an improvement, although. Uh, many of us would say that the dark green itself was not necessarily a very attractive color. Several IRT trains were also repainted in the dark green. And I stood out here uh, at Aqueduct and uh, at various stations on the Rockaway line specifically to get movies of the dark green train as it passed by. We knew this would not last too long. Here's the dark green train with the aluminum painted roof. Notice that it's kept completely graffiti free. Compare it to this train of R10 cars uh, suffering from acute vandalism via the uh, graffiti artists with the spray cans. Artist, of course, is a misnomer. Vandalism is still vandalism, regardless of how it's committed. Not even the newer trains were immune from that sort of thing, although the uh, graffiti would be washed off the stainless steel sides a bit more easily. There's the dark green R10 train again. And here we have the graffiti-free R10 train again, operating on a C train, which was actually a CC train, concourse local all the way, making every stop from Rockaway Park to 205th Street. By this time, the uh, R44 trains had come into service. These were the long cars, 75 feet long each. We have various scenes here of R44s in operation on the A train. Usually the older type cars were used on the CC train. There is the uh, JFK Airport Express which was an operation from Manhattan with only a few stops directly out to the bus transfer uh, at uh, or near uh, JFK Airport. That has since been discontinued, but that also used the Fulton Street subway and the Rockaway connection. That train of R10 still bears the CC uh, route letters and a great deal of graffiti, which the Transit Authority was trying to keep clear, at least on the windows. The junction with the 
former Long Island Railroad Rockaway Jamaica Bay Line was built just beyond the Rockaway Boulevard station and in the vicinity we see the train of dark green R10s with aluminum painted roofs The train is turning from the Liberty Avenue line down into the Fulton Street subway via the connection that was built for it in the 1950s. There's the dark green train of R10s again. So we conclude our view of the uh, BMT and independent subway.